plug your USB drive into the PlayStation and boot it up without a disk. The main menu appears. Now let's have a deeper look at what happened there since the free Mac boot installation. You know the browser and system configuration options, but there are some more now. View Launch Elf. That's that grey screen thing which allowed us to start the free Mac boot installer. You most likely won't need it that soon unless you think of exploiting other memory cards. ESR is used to play backup games which are burnt in a special way. It's nice to have this on the menu, but it starts by itself anyways if a suitable disk is detected. Simple Media System, or SMS for short, is exactly what it says, a simple media system. Launch disk. Actually, I never tried it and I have no idea what it's doing. Reload Configuration. The name says it all. I never came into a situation where I had to use it though. Free Mac Boot Configurator. Now that sounds kinda interesting. Let's have a deeper look. Select Button Layout. I prefer X to be ok, so I press X. Then a lot of stuff comes up. Again, in the bottom line you can see the button functions, in case you forget. From all these things, at the moment we only care about the Configure OS Desis option. So move down and press X. The second line shows the additional entries of the main menu. It's not gonna get a medal for usability or something, but it's able to create, edit, copy and delete entries, which is decent for our needs. As I'm not going to use ULaunch F and ESR that often, I want to put that option to the end of the list. So I select ULaunch F, copy it using left 2, move somewhere to the end of the list, and paste it using right 2. Then the same thing again for ESR. Now delete the two entries at the top using circle. And if you, like me, spared out the HD loader application from the Freemac boot installation, you can delete that entry as well. This leaves us with three free spaces, perfect for our three emulators. Press X, which lets us edit the details of the selected entry. As we just have deleted it, it's empty. Hit X again to type in a name. I decided to keep it simple and just call it NES. Select path 1, then mass, and point it to the ELF file of the NES emulator. That's it for the NES. Now repeat this two times for the Super NES and the Genesis emulator. Please note that although those emulators are pretty evolved, they aren't officially licensed by the gaming companies. That means some games will only work with certain limitations, such as not running at full speed, while other games won't work at all. Sadly, there's nothing you can do about this, except waiting for a newer version of the emulator to come out or get another game. Also, there's a limit to how many game ROMs per directory each emulator can handle. If there are too much of them, it's just gonna show you a blank directory or crash. I read about 200 or so per folder are the limit, but I haven't confirmed that. When done, we leave the OSD settings submenu. To save the changes, select Save CNF to MC0 or MC1 according to what port your memory card is plugged in. Save complete. Select PS2 browser aka FCMB restart or just reset your system. When it's at the browser again, it should show our newly created menu entries. Alright, so let's check it out. What the fuck? Well, that's what NTSC input looks like on my PHL grabber card. But don't worry, there's an option to switch the TV standard. Push select so the menu appears. Then push circle to switch the mode. Now that's a lot better. Depending on your TV set, turning interlacing on or off may have an impact on picture quality. My grabber card seems to like it better with interlacing on. Note that the emulated system type seems to have nothing to do with the output, so you can leave it at NTSC even in PHL countries. Save the configuration. Except for the NTSC thing at the first start, it's a pretty good emulator which lets you play all those classic games you grew up with. And when you're done, just hit triangle and exit the game from the menu. The Super NES emulator also has a few options to take care for. Press triangle to open the menu. Turn up the sound quality and again select PHL display mode. If you happen to have a lot of ROMs, it can slow down the navigation in the menu drastically. It can take ages just to exit the menu screen, and on my first attempts I kept resetting it because I thought the file browser crashed. 
but knowing that and giving it the time it needs, it's actually a pretty good emulator. Here, left one and right one pressed simultaneously bring up the menu, which can be customized in the options if you feel the need to do so. Last up is the Genesis emulator, or Mega Drive, as it's called in Europe. Besides the usual region setting thing, there's really not much to say about this one. It just works fine the way it's supposed to. The menu button is select here. Now all that's left are backup games. So one last time, we pay SKS apps a visit and get the ESR Dispatcher. It's located in the Exploits section. Scroll down until you see ESR Dispatcher GUI. Save that and extract it. Do not put it into our folder, as this folder is supposed to be deleted after this tutorial and you're going to need the ESR Dispatcher for every backup game you want to burn. I'll keep it on the desktop for now. Start it up, click Patch at the bottom and point it to the ISO image file of your game, ICO in my case. This finishes almost instantly. Close the disk patcher and open IMG Burn to write the patched image to disk. This is going to take forever again, so I fast forward. Now everything's set, let's put that game in and see what happens. First, the silver ESR screen will greet you. Press X to make it run the disk. Then the screen goes black for quite some time, but you can hear the drive is working. Out of a sudden, these weird colors appear. It's nothing to worry about, in fact, it shows that ESR is working. And there we are, playing a backup game on a PS2 without any hardware modifications. Please keep in mind that PlayStation games as well as the emulator game ROMs are copyrighted material which belongs to their respective owners. Therefore, I must advise you not to post any comments about how to get those. Neither me nor SKS apps will provide any ROMs or game images. Go ask Google if you have further questions about this. So, that's about all I wanted to show you. I hope you liked it and thanks for watching and bearing my accent till the end. And if you try this at home and find it to be working, it'd be great if you could leave a short comment on which game you used. Alright then, see ya! Like a diamond in the sky When the blazing sun is gone When the nothing shines upon Then you show your little light Twinkle, twinkle all the night Then the traveler in the dark Thanks you for your little spark Though I know not what you are Twinkle, twinkle, little star